what I love about this business is that, especially when it's a husband and wife team and they are a shining light for God in the community and they're pillars in the community, it's a beautiful thing to share their story. And I'm so grateful to have you on here today. Greetings, Red Tie community. It's the ball guy in the red tie. John Butler, your favorite bald-headed red tie wearing uh-huh. realtor and red tie community shows. Coming at you today with a very special guest, a very special story that it's been on my heart to share. And when you see this couple, you'll be like, oh, I know them. They're in the real estate community in the Temecula Valley. They've been around all the time. Well, they have been, and they have an incredible story. Welcome to the studio, Chris and Tom Carter. Hey. Yay. I need an applause button. Yay. Yeah, let's give it to him. Well, welcome to the show. Well, thanks for having us. It's uh, when you asked me, I, I was just honored that I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I'd love to share what has been going on the last few years with us. Um, well, so the people that don't know who Tom and Chris are, uh, Tom has been a title rep in the area for 20 years s- since real estate got started. Yeah, basically. Yeah. You, you, you've <laughs> yeah. seen it all. When, when Adam dug the first hole. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think you sold the first yeah, house. Yeah, I did. Right? Exactly. And uh, you have your beautiful wife here, Chris, or Christine, but we call her Chris affectionately. Um, and you guys have a powerful story to share because, uh, you guys have been together for 37, 30, been married 37 years together, 38. Well, so since Chris was born, got it. Right. Yeah. And, uh, (laughs) um, and you, you've been in the community and, you know, when I started in real estate, you know, you're always there in the office meetings and things Mm -hmm. like that. And, you know, you were the pillar of, uh, of title per se. Wow. And so, um, you know, it's, it's nice when somebody has been in this business because it is a cutthroat business and right. whatnot, but there's people that last those decades and stuff like that. There's a certain quality of character. I think you have to have to have that longevity right? and you have that. Yeah. And, uh, so let's get into your story, man. All right. Well, the reason why I probably <coughs> looked as uh, I'm looked upon as though I, I'm a pillar, like you said, mm-hmm. um, because not only am I just, am I in the Valley doing business with title, uh, which, um, five more years, I'll be retired. Hopefully. Um, but uh, I'm in the community, and I've been in the community for a long time. And that was obviously through athletics, through all my kids who played you know, high levels of soccer, uh, Division One soccer, um, club soccer around town. And then I became the soccer guy, yeah. you know, known as Coach Tom. Coach Tom. And so uh, that was probably a lot of, of why I was successful in the business, mm-hmm. uh, because of just uh, my networking, uh, being a part of that community, uh, which I love and I miss now. I'm retired from it. But um, I think that made a big difference for, for me in terms of business and, and relationships that I've forged over the years in the Valley. And uh, so did you play soccer yourself? I didn't play, no. I was you a football player. And I was, you know, 5'7", I think I shrunk, right? My wife <laughs> says I'm 5'6", but, and I am. I think I was 5'9", at one point, though. <laughs> a towering um, Yeah, five exactly, nine. right. Um, so, no, I was a football player. I was actually uh, all-state, all-league. Uh, football player as a running back and a cornerback wow. uh, in high school, and um, so that was my that was, that's who I was then. You know, I, I wanted to be a professional football player, but at five seven, you're not gonna, you know, with, a, right with, with a small frame, you're not gonna do it. Yeah. But uh, you know, it was it was wishful thinking, and you know, it put me on a path of of where I'm at today. Now, where did you grow up? Was this uh, Southern California? Yeah, thing? Southern California all, all, all my life. Um, West Covina. I okay. uh, went to Covina High School. I went to Mount Sac out there. Uh, I think I got in a couple semesters and just figured, you know what, school's not for me. And um, got into bartending, uh, which really helped me with my business as well. Yeah. Taught me how to network. It taught me how to uh, create relationships, uh, start conversations. And uh, a lot of that, I've, a lot of what, what I do now, I learned back then. Um, establishing a base of customers that would come in. You know, some people would come as Tom here. No, he's not. And they'd leave. Yep. You know, not, not because of the free drinks, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that helps. That helps. <laughs> it does. So, um, but uh, yeah. And how'd you meet, meet this beautiful mm. lady? That's a long story. <laughs> um, but uh, one night I called in sick to work. And at I'd, the restaurant? At, 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 um, no, I was actually loading trucks okay. uh, down in uh, Wilmington. And uh, I um, decided to go with my friends to this little 18 and over club mm-hmm. called Mc- McSee's. McSee's. And um, just happen- happenstance, you know, I ended up being there and went with a buddy of mine. And it was a legs contest. I was actually going to see another friend 
Um, she was participating in this legs contest. There. Legs, I, like, like I was not participating. Yeah, basically, <laughs> I can't see that with your yeah. personality. No. That would be on the basically, no. a bikini contest. Okay, <laughs> got it. Yeah. Um, and so I go, yeah, I might as well go. Um, so we went, and people were starting to gather around the stage, and uh, a buddy of mine was standing on a chair, and then she was actually in the little area that we were at, and he, and he looks at her and he goes, you want my chair? And so she said, yeah, I'll take your chair. So he gave up his chair for her. Mm -hmm. And then I looked at her and I'm like, oh. I go, so he gave you your chair, right? And uh, she said, yes. I go, then you have to dance with me. Ooh, that's smooth. <laughs> that's right. But then I never <laughs> saw her the rest of the night. She avoided me like the plague. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get this guy. Right? So, yeah. um, so I didn't really connect with her until we were leaving. Mm -hmm. You know, the yeah. place was closed up. And all of a sudden, this car starts to come speeding by. My buddy goes, hey, there's that girl. And I'm like, oh, and I stepped out. Um, I was actually driving, right? Yeah, I was driving yeah. my V-Dub, and she was coming out and or driving something. I, either way, I convinced her uh, to give me her number. And, of course, she says, you know, I never give my number to anybody. No, I do not. <laughs> I give fake numbers. First number I've ever given away, right? honestly. So I think she went home and told her mom that, hey, mom, some guy's supposed to call me. I don't know his name. I didn't even know his name. <laughs> and this was on April Fool's Day, 1982. Right. So you're lucky that you got the real number because that would have been a great April Fool's yeah. joke. It would have been. Yeah, it was April Fool's Day. That's yes. right. That's one of the anniversaries that we celebrate. Yes. So what was your first impression of this uh, stra strapping young lad towering 5'9"? He five was a very good dresser. Yeah. I do remember that. Um, and I can still remember what I was wearing, mm -hmm. which is so strange, and what you were wearing. But, um, but yeah, he just seemed very nice. He seemed like a gentleman. So, and then after our first date, he brought me a rose, and just he was just a really stand-up guy. Not that I didn't have stand-up boyfriends, but he just really stood out as far as, you know, that, like... Yeah, that genuine yeah. character that you could tell. Yes, yeah. right from the beginning, yeah. For me, I never dated anybody as good-looking, so I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm, I'm hanging on to her like grim death. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, you're not going anywhere. That's you're right. mine. Right. This so, one's mine. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. wow. How long did you guys date for? A year. Yeah, yeah. A year Not and then, long. yeah, and so the honest, the honest uh, story is that um, we dated, and then um, we said, "Oops, <laughs> someone's coming." <laughs> so, uh, and um, so then we, you know, decided that you know maybe we should get married since we can have a baby and and yeah. give that a go. Well, and you were a very commit. You're a very committed person. So. Yeah, I had some good good role models. My my parents, for one, in terms of. Their commitment to each other and uh, an uncle and aunt who were basically were our mentors as our young married life started. Mm -hmm. So Christian life, and yeah, and uh, yeah. Our, our young married life didn't start out very well. Yeah, yeah. You know, Twenty-two. How old were you? Twenty. Twenty. When we got married, you're still figuring things out in your twenties. Yep. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And um, you know, we have a baby now, and so I have to forego things I wanted to do and provide. Yeah. And so that's when I took on bartending because it was easy cash back then. And um, mm -hmm. it. Um, and I was a waitress. Yeah. At the same restaurant? No, next Different door. One? Right? Yeah, the Chili's. He was at Black Angus. I was at Chili's. Mm -hmm. And she so. ended up getting an office job. Yeah. And then we were two ships passing in the night because I wasn't a very good guy back then. I was out partying all night and uh, mm -hmm. with the other bartenders. We, if, you know, we closed the, closed the bars, the Black Angus in Monrovia, which was just this meat shop, basically. And, yeah. Um, but. Um, you know, and I wouldn't get home till like six in the morning, seven. Ooh, from, that's really party. From after going to eat breakfast and all that stuff, mm -hmm. and then uh, then she'd be leaving for work, and so our relationship started to become estranged. Yeah. And uh, which was the nice part is we never, our daughter didn't have to be with the babysitter. I mean, you know, there was a plus side of that, but yeah. it was hard on our marriage. Yeah. yeah. Very to, hard. To the point where we uh, we separated for a little bit, mm -hmm. um, and then I, you know, based on that, what she talked about, my commitment. Mm -hmm. that I learned from my parents and my uncle and my aunt. Um, There's just no way I'm, am I, am I going to get a divorce. There's just no way. So whatever it takes. So I decided to seek God. Um, and the first person I called was my mentor, Vince. And I was broken up. I uh, didn't know what to do. And so he gave me some scriptures, and I superficially accepted Christ as my Savior. Mm -hmm. just So, I so get you weren't a Christian before this? No, no, okay. no. I grew up in the world and um, did some you know good things and bad things, and mm -hmm. a lot of bad things. But... Um, but learned through Christ that uh, I was obviously forgiven of that stuff. But uh, like I said, I wasn't. Uh, it wasn't a genuine 
it was mostly to get my wife back. Right. Right. And so when that happened, um, we got back together. I, um, I, I just started going back, slipping back into my old ways. And so we became that same two people passing in the night and, um, back to where we started from, you know, uh, she left me for a few weeks and then, um, which rightly so. And, uh, and then I had to figure things out. And so I said, okay, this time I'm really going to commit to it. And I, I don't know if you know who familiar with Raul Reese. Oh yeah. That's my first pastor. Yeah. Oh really? And, uh, I was staying, I think I was staying at my mom and dad's that night or uh, my daughter was being watched by them. And I said, you know, I'm going to go check out this church, see what's up. Mm-hmm. And, um, so I walked in there and, and he starts his, his message and I'm in the back and now I'm trying to be inconspicuous. Mm-hmm. And, and it was like he parted the Red Sea and was just speaking. To really I'm, looking, ah. eyes. I'm going, did somebody tell this guy <laughs> what I'm going through right now? Yeah, that's so and awesome. so, and, and Chris and I had already decided that she was going to leave, bought her a truck. We we're about ready to pack all her stuff. She was going to leave in two weeks. And uh, so I came home that Wednesday night. And I said, uh, I go, before you go, and I actually accepted Christ that, that night. Genuinely. Yeah, genuinely. Yeah. And I said, you got to listen to this guy. I've never heard this before. She goes, I want nothing to do with God. I want nothing to do with any of that stuff. I said, just do this one last thing for me. So she agreed to do it. And so the following Wednesday, right, or was it a Sunday night? Sunday. Sunday, Sunday night. Anyway. So that yeah. Sunday night, Sunday. Uh, he decides to um, talk on his book, Fury to Freedom. Mm-hmm. And Chris was there. And when he was done with that whole message, I look over and she's just bawling her eyes out. And so he had an altar call and she got up and walked up. I'm so like, you weren't a Christian either? Then? No. Oh, no, no. We were no. both. We were Shout super, out to Raul. Yeah. Good job, we were both yeah. super heathens. He's super heathen. And so. I grew well, you grew up Catholic. I grew up just going to church on Easter and Christmas. Yeah. You know. CEO Christians. Yes. Yeah. Christmas right. and Easter only. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If that, right? You know. Yeah. Plus, I was looking for a drink and, and, a, and a hit versus, you know, yeah. the meaning of, of Christmas. That's beautiful. But, uh, and so that's from that point on, um, we both got saved, basically, and pulled everything back. And uh, we've been together through Christ uh, ever mm-hmm. since. And, uh, you know, it hasn't been, it's, it's been, uh, it's not easy, mm-hmm. you know, because there was times in the very beginning, like, you know, she's like, I can't do this. And. Um, but she committed to God, and, and I think she truly did fear the Lord, thankfully. So, yeah. Yeah. and so did I. There's a beautiful thing about uh, marriage, and, and and this is really goes back to the meaning of marriage is that when you have God in the center of it, you know, because we're both imperfect individuals, mm-hmm. uh, the spouses are. Right. You know, everyone's broken in some way, but God is that centerpiece, and He is that sense of perfection. And so, as we get closer to Him, we get closer to our, each other, right. and. I'm so I've never heard that story between you guys, so it was very beautiful. So thank you for sharing sure. that because it's a story of redemption, the prodigal spouse, <laughs> exactly you know, coming back, and uh, but just a true testimony to what God can do in a in a not a flailing marriage, but you know it's hard. No, it's marriage flailing. is hard. Yeah, it is. You know, yeah. you got if you don't have Christ, it's uh, I can't even imagine. Yeah, and and so many people just give up right away, and you know because divorce is basically even amongst Christians is a fifty fifty deal now. A hundred percent. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 getting close. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's sad, and uh, marriage is not easy. <clears throat> but what a beautiful story! That is nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so you. So when was this? Is this in the eighties? This 80s? is in eighty. Right. So eighty. We both got saved in um, November of eighty five. Okay. So November. Mm-hmm. Yeah. November of eighty five, and then um, and our journey with Christ started then, and we found a smaller church to learn how to serve, get closer to God, get closer to each other. Um, start to raise Cassie, our oldest daughter, up in, in the ways of the Lord. And then Shannon came along, and same thing. So they grew up in the church, and then um, eventually uh, our, our son Thomas as well. But so you uh, have three kids. Totally. have three kids, yes. Okay. So Which one's your favorite? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Put this on record. The one that doesn't ask for money, no. <laughs> uh, so none of them. Okay, got it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but uh, now they're, they're, they're productive, fantastic. Uh, she, I know, she did a fantastic job with them. I, I can't take any credit. I was the fun dad, the coach, you know, let's go to, uh, got involved with their sports, coaching all three of them, sometimes all three in one season, same sport. Uh, so constantly going, 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 going. But, uh, and I had to take jobs basically to allow me to do that. I forego some other career options because I go, you know, this is more important to me. You know, you're struggling for years and years, but, mm-hmm. but uh, I wouldn't trade that for the world. 
And those are the things that the kids remember. You know, they don't remember uh, <coughs> your awards at, you know, the office. Right. That you worked 14 hours a day at. Right. You know, they remember dad on the soccer field. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And so I think that, uh, that that helped create a foundation for our family and also for the kids um, who all are walking with, with God right now and married spouses or two of them. Yeah, I guess they're all married spouses who are believers. Mm-hmm. Um, Thomas's wife, Hannah, is coming along. Mm-hmm. She's not a believer or she's getting close to being one. We're, we're just praying for her. Awesome. And uh, he's come back around because I don't know if you've seen Thomas. He's a handsome guy. Um, and well, he's got a good genetic makeup. Yeah, there, exactly. So, yeah, he's been and a, blessed. And a player and, and was in college. And, mm-hmm. uh, and then all of a sudden he met this girl that totally just turned him around. So, Locked his world, huh? Yeah, yeah. So it's almost sounding like the same story we have, right? Yeah, they yeah. they have a lot of similarity right. in their in the way they met and just their whole, you know. And she she got him on the right track. <laughs> like I got you on the right track. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, it's been neat to see. Yeah, the kids are great. You were you were the fun dad. I was the disciplinary. I was the stay at home mom. I was the academic one. You know, the grades, the room mom. You know, all that. You're really involved in, in the school activities yeah, and stuff yeah. like that? Yeah, and their academics. That was super important to me. Mm-hmm. Yes. I mean, our son has a master's. I would have never thought my child would have a master's. The other two, yes, but not him. <laughs> not him, yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, the, and the other two just, I mean, they have their degrees, but it's like that just blows me away. I was the one that was... He'd go to college, and I'd be bringing him his textbooks. <laughs> and his coach would look at me and say, why are you bringing his textbooks? Well, I'm paying for them, so I got the best deal. Yeah. And they just thought that was so funny. No, he needs to be doing that. I could see you as the mom that shows up to the dorm room with, like, sandwiches made for the week <laughs> and, uh, you know, the laundry's all yeah. done. And, like, hey, son, like, mom, stop. <laughs> you're embarrassing me. You know, Ironically, that's not who she is. No? No. No, she didn't do that? No, okay. no. I didn't. What? Now at home, that was me. Yeah. But once they left my domain, then I let them be their individual person, mm. and I, I didn't do that. But yeah, I, that's my personality. So, but I can see where you would get that feeling mm-hmm. of the loving mother. Yes, Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. But it, when it came to their schoolwork, I was on it. I was always checking their grades, even in college, to make sure they were on track. So that was more important to me, you know, with their, like, I don't think I ever maybe once went to Thomas's apartment in college. I'm like, I don't want to see it. It's a mess, I'm sure. It's disgusting. <laughs> yeah. But at home, he was, yeah. Soccer players. Uh, you know, everything was perfect. So, because he knew that's what I expected. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, so he gave us a lot of joy in the high level of soccer that he played. That's um, awesome. He went to college for that. Yeah, he. That's Scholarship yeah. That's, like that's that? what he went to college for. Wow. He wanted to play soccer. That's it. Mm-hmm. And he got uh, scholarship for the most part. Um, started at Oral Roberts University, uh, Division One program, and then decided he wanted to be closer to home. And um, at first, I'm like, ah, but you're playing Division One soccer, and you ended up going to. Yeah, that school's awesome too. Yeah, it was an awesome was, school. When he got that letter that said that he got accepted there, I, I remember I'm on the treadmill, and I'm just like crying. Just like praising God, that school, you, we visited there, you know, a few times and you walk on that campus and you just feel God's presence. The spirit of it, huh? And just all the students walk by and they say, hi, hi, and they have these big smiles on their face. I mean, that school was, and they would show, um, they would do their um, services online for church. Mm -hmm. And I would watch every, every uh, week their services online. Is this in Oklahoma? Yeah. Oklahoma. Tulsa, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah. It was cool. So how old yeah. are the kids now? 37. Seven. Cassie. Mm-hmm. And then. Shannon is 32. And Thomas is 27. And Cassie has three of our grandkids that she's holding hostage. And <laughs> Shannon has one. And Thomas has one with one on the way. So, um, and Thomas is, uh, his, his wife is a Division One player at uh, UNLV. And uh, so TK is what we call his son, Thomas, Thomas Kane. Um, at one years old is already dribbling better than most five or six year olds yeah. and shooting the ball. It's just, it just, you look and you go, Oh my God, so he's destined to be a soccer this player. Dude, yeah, yeah. I'm like this guy's going to go somewhere, maybe another level than his dad, but it's incredible. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> it's kind of neat to see. And that's what I love about, um, the, doing this show is, is understanding people's stories and then, you know, putting those pieces together and getting that big picture of it. Cause right. it's so beautiful to, 
to hear about your er early relationship, you know, and and how um, that could have gone a different direction. Sure. You know, and then God turned that around and made something beautiful out of that. Right. Um, and I think really the success of it was, you know, it may sound as we're talking that we might be child centered, but we were far from that. Our marriage always came first. Mm -hmm. and, and I think once, at least once a quarter for our whole marriage life, we'd go away and get rid of the kids. And if spend, yeah. They <laughs> and would if, stay with either his parents or my mom. Right, right. So, Anyways. Which, so we were blessed that we had that opportunity. Yeah. And, and even when we had no money, I mean, we would just, even if they just went to my mom's for the weekend and he and I would just stay home. But we always connected as a husband and wife. Because we didn't, we knew that once those kids were gone, we still needed to be connected as a husband and wife. Absolutely. So yeah. yeah, it's 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 been a great a great life up until two and a half years ago. Two and a half years ago. <laughs> so which, happened two and a half years ago. So which um, you know that um, what was I lost my train of thought there? I'll I'll catch it. But um, two and a half years ago, uh, we were down in San Diego. We were, it was our anniversary, anniversary. and we we're staying at, the, I think, the Hyatt or something like that over yeah. there down by the harbor. And we usually, we we're big runners, and we love to run all the time. And, um, and so we went for a run that morning, and I, was, I noticed something in my chest. Like, why, why am I having trouble breathing? We just did a 5K like a month ago. Um, and um, so I, I just kind of, you know, it'll go away. So we went to dinner that night and a comedy show. And then uh, we, we had to go up these stairs that connected Petco Park with the hotel. And I was so winded, and, and I'm in shape, at least in terms of car mm -hmm. cardiovascular stuff. Um, I was so winded, I go, something's wrong. And I didn't really want to say a whole lot. Kind of got through the weekend. And then I think the next week we were working out on the treadmill, I almost fainted. Um, so she's like, you better go to the doctor. Um, you know. And so they diagnosed me with uh, walking pneumonia and then um, gave me all these antibiotics, which is, I believe, what started what, what disease that I have right now. And then, um, and then I, I said, this, this isn't working. And they um, decided to re-diagnose me with regular pneumonia, and then um, gave me the, more of the same medication, but stronger, no, nothing. And so then they, you know, we decided it's gotta be something different. So I had a CAT scan done, and they recommended to go see a pulmonologist. And, and uh, at this point, is your mind thinking cancer or anything my, like that? I'm not sure what to think um, right. because it just I'm just thinking it's going to be a, you know pneumonia. They'll give me medication and it'll be gone. Mm -hmm. But the doctor came in with this 3D scan of my lungs, and it showed scarring in it, like I'd been a smoker, or, and, I, and I'll, I've never been a smoker really. Um, and uh, he said, "Have you ever heard of um, interstitial lung disease?" And I said, no, it doesn't sound good. And his bedside manner at that point was, you know, well, you know, you've got it. There's no cure for it. Um, and so it just left us devastated going, well, what do we do with this? And so we started researching and researching. And um, later on, I was finally diagnosed with um, a disease called scler scleroderma. And it's called sy sy systemic scleroderma which connects organs to that same disease. And it attacked my lungs, mm. which created the scarring. So it's not cancer. It's not cancer. It's scarring in the lungs. In the lungs. But that's just the one of the byproducts of the scleroderma, which is a overproduction of collagen in your body, creates a lot of inflammation. And um, so that was the start of, okay. And then we found out scleroderma, there's no cure for it. Um, they usually gave people five years. And um, the way I feel today, Way more than five years. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. There's, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't. I think doctors are just educated guessers. Right. And um, I just don't believe that. And as a result, um, I, I think I'm going to live as as long as I'm supposed to. So. Because God's word says different. Ab absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I've held on to His promises as a result. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So it's been a long two and a half years, trying to figure out first off what you had, mm -hmm. and basically. We did the research, right. and mostly when I say we, <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> me, um, just because that's my personality. Well, you're I'm gonna a, research the hell out of that, yes, thing, aren't you? Yeah. I'm a there. I need to find the answer to any to everything. Yeah. You know, if it, you can't tell me, you know, we don't know. I'm like, no. There's a reason. 
you know, for what you have. We've got to figure it out. So many tests, so many, yes, lots of tests and lots of research. And me constantly on email with the doctors. We have Kaiser, so there's lots of pros and cons with Kaiser. But one of the pros is there's an email system. So you can email the doctors and ask them questions and they get back to you. So, I mean, I was, they all don't like me. <laughs> Let's yeah. put it that way. I'm like, I'm kidding. They do like me. But You're the squeaky wheel, though. <laughs> yes, Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And uh, so, and I mean, he's still getting tests. To this day, we're still doing yeah. tons of tests right. because now something new popped up come January. So with one autoimmune disease comes others. Yes. Um, so as a result of the scleroderma, which uh, when it first took me down, uh, attacked my muscles, attacked my lungs, um, I lost weight, I was weak, could g barely get out of bed. And um, I mean, every day was a struggle and I'm thinking, gosh, something's really wrong here. And so, um, but eventually we started looking at diets. <coughs> um, I read a book called The Walls Protocol and it's a book basically that uh, this gal who is a doctor just basically uh, designed this diet uh, that re that basically revitalized her life and got out of out of her deathbed. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I read them like that, that makes a lot of sense. And what was kind of the uh, basis? It's of it, it's or? it's almost like a, it's just like a paleo diet, uh, mm -hmm. turbocharged. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I never got into eating like the organs, and the, the hearts, and the lizards, or the lizards, the gizzards, and and liver and all that stuff. Um, but I did notice a difference in how it was affecting my my, my condition. Well, you want anti-inflammatory, anything that's anti-inflammatory you want to eat. Right. Um, you know, any processed foods and sugars you want to stay away from and because of the inflammation that it causes. Right. And uh, that inflammation is devastating. Yeah. Uh, and so that's an intestinal thing? So no, this is, is just the muscle thing uh, okay. with the scleroderma. Mm -hmm. so because it's connective right. tissue is what it attacks, your connective tissue. Eventually we hired a functional medicine doctor mm -hmm. who uh, basically is holistic, mm -hmm. uh, supplements, uh, elimination diet where you take everything out and take some stool tests and urine tests and all the saliva tests and determines what is actually ailing you. What's, what, where's the source of this? And it was connected to uh, what's called leaky gut. And so leaky gut over the years, and most people have it and they don't, they just go, oh, there's something wrong. You know, I have to take antacids, uh, but it, it can parlay itself into something much worse and in, in this case, in most cases, autoimmune disease. Uh, which autoimmune disease, nobody knows why it picks, you know, the autoimmune disease that it picks, but it happened to pick this one for me. And um, so it was just, uh, it was a big struggle diet-wise because I love food. Mm -hmm. uh, but it did make a difference once we figured that out, uh, able to get back on track to the point where when Thomas got married, I was feeling really good. Um, I actually officiated, officiated their wedding which was a, just a huge blessing. And then, it's a beautiful uh, memory. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and then we got on a plane after he got married the next day and headed to Costa Rica, did some major hikes. And I'm thinking, man, everything's going well now. I'm feeling good, no issues. So on some medication, uh, enough to keep it at bay. Mm -hmm. And then um, that, that started getting better and better. And then all of a sudden I started, we went to Jamaica in January. Uh, was it this year? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I started having these stomach issues. Going, huh, what's going on there? And they started about you know, once every couple of weeks, and it went every couple of days, and then it was every day, to the point where there was times I, I just, I couldn't move, I couldn't function. There was so much pain, so much nausea. In, in, the, in yeah. the stomach area? Yeah. Region? And so we thought what I had what's called gastroparesis, which is the, sort of the paralysis of the upper intestine. So when your stomach empties food into your upper intestine, um, that's supposed to start breaking down your food and moving it along. Well, it stopped doing that. So everything would get backed up. And so that created pain, gas, uh, nausea, and um, vomiting. vomiting. So malnutrition was huge. So you can see I'm, I'm half the man I used to be. How much uh, weight have you lost? Um, I got down to 114 pounds. Oh. Right before I got sick, I was close to 170, right? Yeah, we knew yeah. two and a half years ago it was which, 170. Which was overweight. I wanted to lose 20 pounds. Uh, anyways, but not this not way. that much, <laughs> not that much, and so. Um, but the big you lost you when you were, well, like when Thomas got married in last September, you were about 140, 145. 145, which is ideal. Yeah, and then once January hit, that's when it just. Yeah. 
you lost from January to now you're down. I'm at 120 right now. So yeah. the goal is to try to gain five pounds a week now that we've sort of, I think I've sort of figured out a diet mm -hmm. um, and see if we can get some muscle going. And was a was a daily um, dietary plan for you? Well, at one time I was pretty regimented on the elimination diet, only eating what I was told to eat. Right. Um, and I think, uh, I think that made a difference in my health. And then once I got off that program, I started slipping back just a little bit and um, started to uh, not eat regular foods, but for whatever reason, I just did, maybe it was the lack of the supplements I was taking, I don't know. But um, it, it just started changing after that. And that's when I started getting the, um, the stomach aches and all that stuff. But uh, so now I'm more, and I, I went paleo. Now I'm more on a um, uh, just almost let's see if this affects me type diet because I have to eat foods that I can digest. Can you tell rather immediately? Like no, as as I can't. Like, oh, no, that sometimes was a bad it's idea. like later on that evening. Okay, it's like where's Tom? Well, he's been in the office for three hours basically, mm -hmm. um, and you know I, it's funny because it was so bad. Uh, I was start starting to get depressed because I was missing moments. The kids would come over, go swimming. And I couldn't be there, or I'd be watching from a distance, just because I just didn't feel good, no energy. And I'm the guy who got all the toys out, put them all away, jump in the pool with the grandkids, and I'm just sitting there going, I can't do it. So, and, and she's had to take over a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Um, I have to take out the trash cans yeah. now. Can you imagine this pretty <laughs> woman taking yeah, out right? the trash, trash cans? So, no, so. I've, I've stepped up a lot. I have to do a lot of things that I normally didn't do. This was the man who totally took care of me and the the roles have kind of reversed yeah. so yeah i'm the caregiver now and yeah. he's always his personality is more of the caregiver you'd think you know i'm a mom i'm a woman i should be the caregiver but you always if i'm sick he would be like what do you want what do you want you know back in the day and i'm like you're sick oh get out of bed you're fine <laughs> <laughs> rub some soup on it yeah how is this um affected your uh your faith in, in your journey here hmm. uh, because and I'm, I guess I'm speaking from uh, my own imagination or curiosity of like you know we we like to think like oh I'm just gonna live to be a hundred and uh, it's all gonna be great and all that kind of stuff but then all of a sudden you get thrown a curveball and you know I, I've been in a very fortunate place in my life where I haven't had any health issues thank and praise the Lord kind of deal but um, when it happens man it can rock your faith so how mm -hmm. individually and then also as a couple right you know because it is it's a it's got to be a strain i would imagine uh it's a huge strain you know because it's true if you don't have have your health you really don't have anything mm -hmm. and um so with that it, it just was so evident that um that statement is true and we um um where was i going with that well i feel I like we've you you definitely dove more into the word. I mean, you've always been, yeah. you so know, had your devotions and all that. I, but I think you, not, it's made you a stronger Christian. We've reached out to so many people. So many people have come and prayed at the house with you, and um, so it's it's been awesome. So the situations, yeah, it's it's increased my faith, mm -hmm. draw me closer to the point of my first love, mm -hmm. uh, which you know is mm -hmm. different than you know as you take your journey you. You go down rabbit holes and rabbit trails. And um, in the beginning, I was on fire. And I was at the bar trying to save all the waitresses and the bartenders right. and the customers. So then I said, you can't do it anymore or we have to let you go. And I right. said, well, then I quit. So, um, But then we can get into kind of a, a lukewarm kind sure, of Sure, absolutely. Faith, yeah, you know? well, we, we get complacent and yeah. we, we get comfortable. And, yeah, when everything's going well. And so, but when, yeah. when you're thrown a curve like that and all of a sudden the plans that you had, you thought, we're going to work out or not God's plans. And um, so you have to understand. I've had to learn and understand why it is I'm going through what I'm going through. And um, I, I've had a recent breakthrough in terms of that situation because um, once I decided that, you know what, I'm just trusting God. I'm joyful. I'm thankful for every day. Um, my whole health outlook and physical being start and this is just recently i'm talking like within a couple of weeks mm -hmm. just started changing big time and i start, I, I gradually noticed myself feeling better 
I started imagining myself looking better. Mm -hmm. um, and as a result, I think I've had six days of, mm -hmm. of just no issues. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, wow, what, what, what did I do? And, and God's saying, you didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. you know, yeah, what other, did I do? Other than uh, trust in me. Mm -hmm. and, and so here's a reward for trusting in me. And, um, and I, I truly do see, and, and it's allowed me to reach out to other people, other men. I've started, started Bible studies, mm -hmm. uh, either physically or through text. Um, started attending one with Curtis Doss. Mm -hmm. um, that was really good. But then I started getting sick and sicker. Um, and so I had to back out because it was too late and I just was no good. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. that uh, has definitely increased my faith, uh, made me a stronger Christian, has al allowed me to be more bold about it, uh, and just, you know, just let it fly. Mm -hmm. what's, what's the reason why you're doing it? Because of my, my faith in Jesus Christ. That's what it really is. And um, it's uh, allowed me to eliminate things that I didn't need in my life um, and, and take on the things that, that uh, God has for me. And uh, so that's, in terms of me, it's made me a lot stronger. And, and I don't go a day without meeting him all day. So just walking just side there. by side. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, one day at a time. People say, how are you doing? I said, one day at a time. That's it. And my uncle always says, you know, yesterday's gone. Um, uh, today's yours. And tomorrow's none of your business. Like and, so, yeah. <laughs> and so I learned to just concentrate on today, yeah. you know. And sometimes it's moment by moment going, okay, I just ate that, what happened? What's going on? You know? And so I've learned to get beyond that, too, because it could, it could take up your whole day. And when that happens, John, my energy, it's like somebody just took the, the batteries out of me. I just go, <laughs> and that's it. Um, and, and you can't predict it, huh? So I know. You can be in the middle of something yeah, like, oh, all right, I'm done. And then I start thinking what I eat, and she's asking me, what'd you eat? And I go, I, I don't know. You know, mm -hmm. nothing unusual. Mm -hmm. So, but sometimes yeah. I could point back and go, oh, yeah. I snuck that hamburger in. <laughs> it's been a big test on our marriage, too. Oh, huge. Because, like, I'm thinking, so two and a half years ago when, you know, all our kids are gone, Thomas is gone, and then, you know, he gets married, and I'm like, okay, whew, you know, we're done. And I'm like, we should be enjoying our lives. This is, this is our time now. Because right away we had a baby, so we never had that, you know, beginnings marriage where it was just the two of us so I get I get kind of like okay God please <laughs> but you know speak to me what it, you know why when I feel down or something when it's mm -hmm. when it's you know I get selfish thinking this is our time so I need to slap <laughs> myself <laughs> and and um, I think a lot of that has to do obviously with our faith and obviously the time we spent focusing on each other without the kids and making that always a priority mm -hmm. that took us into this time with enough strength to get through it. Because had you not done that quarterly for the past 37 years of spending time together, right? No, know, I don't know if that, know. if you would have made it this far, no. but certainly when you hit this mountain that you got to climb now. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a mountain for both of us because she's not, like she said, I did everything in terms of all that stuff. I and mean, she takes care of our finances. Um, but, uh, and, and raise the kids basically. But um, it uh, just, it's, it's just been amazing to watch her take this on as well. Um, she's, she's had an attitude with a smile. And sometimes I could just be a pill because I just don't feel good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he's on a low dose of steroids. Mm -hmm. And he was on, he's been on high dose of steroids too. But, but this is the man, and I used to always tell people when, people would say, oh, Tom is so nice and so, you know, he's such a great guy. And I, and I would say that what you see out in public mm -hmm. is what you see in our home. Mm -hmm. He's not a different person. Mm -hmm. And I always loved that, that I can say that proudly. But there's been times when he's like, I'm like, where is my Tom? What happened to him? You she know? says it a lot different than that. <laughs> 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 but, it's just, I never thought I would ever have to experience when you, you know, the person that you fall in love with and then all of a sudden something like this happens to your health and, and you change because he's never been a depressed person. If anything, it was, I would get depressed and he'd be lifting me up, but never have you ever been depressed and now, you know, you get depressed and it's like. Understandably so. Yeah. Yeah. Understandably mm -hmm. so. Uh, and that's another thing I've learned to do is just, I really am not 
I told her, yeah, I've gotten depressed, but it is what it is, and this is what God has me going through. Um, and I take that on with joy. Um, beautiful. Yeah, I have to. I don't really, what's my alternative, right? Yeah. You know, live miserably, and and I've done that enough and taken her down. And, and the other, I think it was a couple of weeks ago when I was really feeling kind of bad. I said, I'm so sorry. This is not what we signed up for. Um, so, uh, but she just continues to, just to be strong. And she's had her moments where she probably wants to take my head off. And, uh, Understandably yeah, so. Abso- yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I don't blame her. And then I'm sitting on the couch downstairs by myself going, I got to learn how to shut up. <laughs> you know, it's a... Uh, we are humans. We're frail, you know. Um, we like to think of ourselves in our in our perfect imagination of how we should be and things like that. But I think that's the beauty of God's grace, right? Is Absolutely. that He can come through and shine through, even when we're not feeling so good. Yeah. Or give us that little uh, conscious, uh, you know, slap in the head, like, "Don't be a knucklehead." Right. Mm-hmm. Don't right. be mean. To, you know. I know. But uh, we're human. No. So she's been just fantastic, and sometimes I'm just. I've been on the couch and I'm watching her take the trash cans out, mm-hmm. do all my chores for me, and and it starts to eat at me a bit. Going, she, why are you doing that? I'll do that. And she's she's looking at me, going, "Are you crazy? You can't even get off the couch." Yeah. And uh, and she's just doing it like it's no big deal, you know. Out there pulling weeds. She's pulling weeds, <laughs> and, you know. I'm not a pulling weeds garage, person. Vacuuming the cars out, and I'm going, wow. And God does that. He makes He makes you strong where you think you were weak. Yeah. And isn't that the beauty of marriage? Um, you know, when you say your vows, you say for better or worse, mm-hmm. in sickness and in health. And it just seems like, oh, it's something that I say, it's this little magical mm-hmm. thing, and then all of a sudden we're married kind of thing. But when you actually look at the weight of those words, as you guys are fully experiencing right now, um, there is that vow before God, and it's so beautiful to see you guys mm-hmm. living that out. Yeah. Um, divorce has never been in our, in our vocabulary ever since since we we got saved saved. saved. and, um, yeah, we have our tough times, but you know, we're tough people at the same time and through him, we can do all things, uh, who strengthens us. And, um, I just don't know what we do without that. It would be tough. We would have been toast a long time ago. You know, we wouldn't even be sitting Mm -hmm. here and I probably would be dead along with a couple of my other friends. But, um, (laughs) so yeah, like. If she's, she's my biggest advocate. The doctors either love her or they hate her. Um, and she said they like her. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> she, she makes them earn their money. She does. And they know? change their attitude going, okay, well, let's, let's dig deeper. Let's, yeah. let's look at this. Yeah. And but unfor- unfortunately, it, it, that's what it takes. Um, a little scolding. And it's funny because I've never thought about it. I don't, doctors know everything. I, why, why am I telling them what to do? Mm. Uh, but that's changed. With uh, Dr. Google, that doesn't help them. Yeah. Right? So, gosh. Well, according to WebMD. Right, you know, exactly. <laughs> you drop some right. knowledge on them. Right. So, yeah. so you have a book over here. What's going on? Um, it's, it's, it's a book that I um, uh, was given to by Curtis Doss. And um, as, as you knew, I've been struggling for the last two and a half years. And so um, I was doing a Bible study with him. And then he had, oh, he had mentioned... Um, he had mentioned uh, a book that he read that changed his life and his whole way of thinking. Yeah. And he goes, you should read it. And he says, as a matter of fact, I'll buy you a copy. And I said, oh, okay, if you want. So um, I ended up meeting him one day and got the copy. And um, people have given me a lot of books over the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. And I start reading them. And I go, eh, so, you know, I get it. Um, and I've never been one to finish a book. Mm-hmm. Um, this one I've finished. And now I'm going to study it. Um, that's how good I think it is and how impactful it is. What's the premise of it? Uh, the premise is uh, basically Romans 2, 12, 2. If I can open it up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, that's the launching, um, the launching uh, scripture for it. Um, so Romans 12, 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is, that, what, what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And uh, just that whole mindset of just accepting the perfect will of God. And that's what I've learned how to do uh, unknowingly as I just continue to dive in his word and, and read stuff like this. And, for, uh, and in Proverbs 23, 7 says, for, he, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. And I've really become a subscriber to that uh, scripturally. Yeah. Not the other stuff that, you know, it's the out there. The woo-woo stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, the secret and all that. But yeah. 
Um, so that's changed my whole outlook, my whole thinking. And uh, so I put that into practice. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I've sort of grasped it just recently and just noticed a big change in everything. Um, my health, um, you know, once I get my muscle back, I'll get some of my stamina back and strength. But um, so the missing ingredient is the name of the book. And it's uh, really propelled my faith even to another level. And what's, who's the author? Uh, the author is... Uh, yeah, somewhere. Ron, Ron, oh, Ron McIntosh. Show the camera there so oh. we can see that. There we go. Okay. Missing Ingredient by Ron McIntosh. Very cool. Is he a pastor? Um, he is. He's actually a, a pastor in Oklahoma. Okay. Uh, went to Oral Roberts University, and I think he uh, started his the whole program there. And then, um, but it's one of these books like, okay, I'll start. And I couldn't put it down. Mm -hmm. um, and then something would come up and I'd set it down and I go, I go right back to reading it. And it's, it's made that's a huge, a, that's saying a lot. Yeah. For <laughs> me, it's the power of a good book. Yeah. And so I, I truly believe that this has been impactful in, in me understanding what faith is truly about. Mm. You know, it's not about me and my sickness. It's about my faith in God and how I need to learn to trust in him. And that's what's uh, been carrying me along. I stopped, I stopped focusing on my health yeah. and just started focusing on him and through capturing every thought that comes in my head. Something that's hard to do. It is, <laughs> you know, because we get, we get bad thoughts and good yeah. thoughts. And, um, and so I've learned to capture the negative bad thoughts and give them to Christ. And it's funny how it just I'm done because I truly believe it. Mm. Uh, versus if you don't and you go, oh, I'm still thinking about it, Lord. I don't know. Um, it's gone. Yeah. So, and it's really made a big difference in, in my life and in my attitude towards my wife who, um, you know, I just hate when I see her frustrated with me. Um, but, but so, yeah, I highly recommend it. It's changed my life, I think. Excellent. And, um, and I think you've probably noticed a difference in the past couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah. It's been an uh, incredible journey you guys have had. Yeah. And it's not over. No, nope. no, it's not. We've got, Six, we got five grandkids with one on the way, and we're just looking forward to, you know, being the. So, what does the next 10 years look like in the Carter's life? Uh, more travel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and also good health. Um, whether I get back to normal, you know, where I was running all the time and, and co refereeing soccer and coaching, I'm, I'm retired from soccer stuff, anyways, but um, mm -hmm. I see that coming back. Now we now we're the second part of our life is our grandkids. Actually, Ezra, our oldest, is doing a little soccer camp on Saturday, mm -hmm. and actually the the league that he's doing it with is our son coaches that league. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, that's we're just you know back before COVID we were he played basketball so we'd go to all those basketball games and just being part of that life and I think. When, when TK gets older and all his soccer, we'll, it'll be we'll be doing everything all over again, you know, on a different level because we're the grandparents. But um, I just I really look forward to that. It's we're we're really close to our grandkids, yeah. especially TK, because I watched him some from the time he was born pretty much because she had to go back to work and so he's been. It's like I'm watching his dad. Yeah. All over again. Yeah, all over again. So exactly like yeah. That. I haven't gotten to the grandparent stage yet. Uh, although my 15 year old, you know, <laughs> you just never know. Yeah. Like I don't want to be a young grandparent. Okay. No, no. But it, I, I can only imagine how, um, what a thrill it must be to see, you know, a, a part of you, but a part of your child, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like that's got to be wild. You know? mm -hmm. That is. It is. Yeah, it's, it's so funny just to watch TK's every move. It's just like his dad. Yeah. Um, his personality. Uh, he's got a ton of it. Mm -hmm. I think more than his dad, but he's he's just he's a cute kid too. So, yeah. um, and well, your family's very blessed with genetics. So yes, yeah, yeah. All our grandkids are adorable. Adorable, they are. You've seen pictures, right? So, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's really kind of it. Just to kind of you know spend the most of the majority of our time with them and traveling and. Um, well, we we've been looking at moving out of state, like everybody else, you know, <laughs> getting out of California. So, yeah, I've been kind of researching again here with my research for the, even before you got sick, kind of looking at different places. But then now once the grandkids came, I'm like, we can't leave them. Yeah. I mean, as much as 
we would love to get out of California, but all our kids are so close here. And Where would you go? Oh, dear. I've looked at different places. I've looked at places in Arizona. I've looked at places in Florida. Um, Florida. Um, even you have, we have somebody that's looking at places in Oahu. Mm -hmm. um, I'm basically, what I'm looking for is good air quality. Because mm. when we moved from where we grew up, we had really bad air quality and we moved to San Diego just because I couldn't handle the air quality. So, and then when we moved here to this area, air quality was great. It was, mm -hmm. if you went any farther in, into Corona or any farther than that, the bad air quality again. So, um, so I, that's my criteria is one of them. And the warm weather because he gets a disease called Raynard's. Raynard's yeah, and it's, it's another you know, autoimmune it. that comes with the package deal. Right. And you so, get cold. So. And my hands get blue if it's too cold. And, oh. um, I'm re right now I'm skin and bones. So even though it's probably hot in our house, uh, and she's got the air conditioning just blaring. Uh, I'm with a blanket. That's that's how much mm -hmm. it, it affects you sometimes. Uh, yeah, so that's what you've been looking for that. But but again, we can't, you know, I tell Thomas to uh, apply at different colleges out of state. <laughs> like, and he, he has been. I'm like, because we would follow him, I'm sure, if it was a place that we could live. Right. Um, and we still love our other kids and our other grandkids, but um, if we could, you know, at least that would give us, and then you know we'd be with some of our grandkids, right. and of course we'd always come and visit. But yeah. um, but if he can get a college job, you know, out of state, that would be nice. So with with autoimmune immune issues mm -hmm. and COVID happening and stuff like that, um, when all this hit, mm -hmm. what was like? Were well, you freaked out about it? Were, were no, you I, I was to I was it, never freaked out about mm -hmm. it. Uh, I, I, and I never do get freaked out about that stuff mm -hmm. to the point of complacency. Yeah. But um, I think I really did have to adhere to the protocols because I have an underlying issue, especially the lung issue. Yeah. And um, so it, uh, I, I mean, I, I just have to follow them because it, if I do get something like COVID, I did get sick, I think it was in January. Oh, yeah. And so I had to go on antibiotics, which was, I think, the... I had my gut all straightened out, uh, and I went on a heavy dose of antibiotics, and I've been on antibiotics like two or three times since. Just messed up my gut and started this other disease called SIBO. But so uh, antibiotics don't work well with you. No, they don't, yeah. and they don't work well because all they do yeah. is they kill all the bac good bacteria in your body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and there's so much connected to the gut. Uh, it's just it just blows my mind uh, how much our everything we have. Uh, Health-wise, is, is a result of your gut. I've heard that. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So eating those McDonald's every day doesn't help. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I'm guilty of that. Yeah, I know. I was I was really bad. Uh, I owned an inspection business and I was on the road all the time. So I'm thinking, oh, here comes Mr. Carter. You know, and I pull into McDonald's, right? <laughs> they already have your food ready. <laughs> yeah, they thought I was a franchise owner. Yeah. So, but uh, so I think that a lot of that bad food it took its toll as well, and mm -hmm. yeah created some of these issues and stress stress is huge uh, when I left uh, lawyers title I had a partnership with uh, a couple people mm -hmm. and um, I think I allowed that stress to really settle in and that's when I guess about a year later it it, when it this is when it all started yeah. affecting me Interesting. Yeah. and um, for some reason I just struggled with the decision that I made and um, to be honest, I wasn't treated very well mm -hmm. when I did leave, um, basically shunned by my partners and, and the company I worked for. So uh, that, that and, I, and I'm one of these guys that needs everybody to like me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've learned to kind of get away from that as well. So it's taught me to do that. And there's nothing I can do if somebody doesn't like me. You know, I just gotta live my life. Yeah. But I think it was a big uh, contributor uh, in terms of how quickly this thing just kind of took over. So, mm -hmm. but stress. Yeah. And it's, then the stresses of life. At they said 99% of illness is caused by stress. Wow. And, just, and you're, and you're, you look at you and you think, oh, you have no stress. She's an easygoing person and, and everything. But, but he would it. hold it all mm -hmm. inside. Yeah. And that's even worse. And I'm, 
I'm a very high stress person too, but I let it all out. If I'm stressed about something, everybody knows about it. <laughs> so it's catch so. 22 because she lets out all her stress on me yeah. and I take on that stress. Yeah. And so. I, I, I know. Absorbed. And it's, right. it's terrible. And I, but I'm like, I can't not do it. Yeah. And you're my best friend, so you have to hear it. Oh, I'm the best friend. <laughs> I'd hope so friend. after this long. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so it's, it, it's so definitely, it's, and you've it learned. Was one, it was one of the major triggers, yeah. I think. Yes, stress is very stress, and the foods. And the foods. And two things. Mm. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah. Well, you guys have had an incredible journey together, and uh, I see nothing but good things for you guys. Yeah. So do we. Mm-hmm. So do I. Mm-hmm. I'm just grateful that you guys came in to share your story today. I, I appreciate you, you know, uh, taking the time to do so. Um, if, if somebody's struggling with um, one of the conditions that, uh, that I'm struggling with, SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which means that the, the bacteria in your lower gut has creeped its way up to your upper intestines where it's not supposed to be and creates havoc. Um, you know, give me a call or... You know, shoot me a text or whatever, and I'll tell you what I know and all the roads I've gone down to try to figure out exactly what it is. And yeah. then also if somebody's struggling f- with scleroderma, mm-hmm. um, which we have, I believe, in remission, yeah, just, you know, let me know. I'll mm-hmm. be more than happy to tell you what I've done to, to not fix it, but at least, you know, mm-hmm. keep it at bay. Because they're all things that are hard to di- detect. like. And, and, and they're thorns, you know. Paul had a thorn, and... It made him stronger in, in his faith and mm-hmm. and uh, his walk and his witness, and uh, that's that's basically how I look at it now. It's just it's just a thorn, and it's just something I got to you know it's like a limp, right? I got a limp, and we're just gonna limp along and and uh, get there as fast as we can. So it's inspiring. But, yeah. Um, now without him, I can't do anything. So. Well, I've I've known you guys for, gosh, well, many years now, and uh, you know people's paths they come and go and stuff like that but I've always had an appreciation for you guys because I knew that you guys had a, a beautiful marriage and a strength to you guys uh, and you guys are a reflection of Christ and so um, you know I've, I've you know you watch people from Facebook and stuff like that kind of see what's going on and I know you guys are Dave Matthew uh, lovers yeah, and stuff yeah, like that yes so, we are. As, as is my wife and um, so I wanted to capture this moment and these stories for you guys uh, because it's um, it's a beautiful thing to share in the years to come. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. if we can be a witness to somebody, or mm-hmm. um, I, I, I just I love sharing our story with people who need it. Mm-hmm. I don't go around just blabbing it out, but if somebody needs our story, then you know it'll at least help them to get on the right path and go. There is hope, um, mm-hmm. whether it's your marriage that's struggling or um, health issues. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all for that. I think that's why God put me on here. So, Isn't it funny? We can't have a testimony unless we've had a test. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. And you right. guys have had that. Mm-hmm. And then some. Definitely have, have had it. Yeah. So, um, like I said, it's been kind of touch and go. Uh, but, you know, our, our, our strength in our Lord has is, is gotten through us through this. And, boy, you know, sometimes I wonder, you know, how much strength we've take, taken from him. Like the, the woman who touched the, the hem of his garment mm-hmm. and he said who just took that power well, we've taken a lot of power <laughs> <laughs> well he's got an that's endless right. uh, supply that's, that's so I think true, he's good right? <laughs> but uh, I, d- I definitely believe that he's feeling it now because I believe it Yeah. not because I'm just touching it but because I believe that that's where it's coming from um, your faith has made you well absolutely yep. absolutely mm-hmm. so with uh, again I couldn't ask for a better partner and biggest advocate keeps me on track frustrates me because what did you eat can you, you shouldn't be eating that. I was like, I was just going to throw it out. <laughs> I just want a donut. That's Come right, on. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, so yeah. I couldn't have done it without her as well. She's my rock here on earth. So you guys are awesome. But mm-hmm. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming on the show, sharing your stories, being open and uh, sharing your hearts. And Chris, you did fantastic. I know yeah. you didn't want to be on camera, but uh, you did amazing. Yeah, my husband lied to me and said this was not, <laughs> not an on-camera interview. I didn't know, but uh, it's all good. You look great, you know. 
Oh, well, I have so, a hair appointment and, tomorrow. And, could we have done this the yeah, other day or next and day? It has ten, 10 pounds to me, and I could use the 10 pounds. Oh, yeah. There you go. Right? That's I, the beauty of camera yeah, work. Right? Exactly. And I cannot take, actually, it's funny. I've been gaining weight, yeah. and he's been losing weight. So I'm like, because he's eating all this food to gain weight, and I'm right there eating it with him. But it's not working for him because right. of the malabsorption part of it, but it's like working on me. Well, oh. You guys balance each other out. Yes, yeah. I, yeah. yeah. That is the truth. Balance each other out. That's key. Yep. Yes. Okay. Well, guys, I adore you. Thank you so much yeah. for coming Thanks. on the show, sharing Appreciate your stories it. and your hearts. And, uh, you know, I hope this does bring a lot of encouragement and inspiration to people because um, whether it's relational issues, health issues, um, we all struggle with something, right? Right. Mm -hmm. But we all know the answer, and that's Christ. That's right. Mm -hmm. So thanks that's for coming on the show and being sure. that shining light. Absolutely. You know, sometimes people need um, Jesus with skin on it, right? Yeah. Skin on. And that's who I try to be if, if in fact, that, that uh, opportunity presents itself. Like so that. Jesus with skin. Yep. yep. So uh, not Jesus, but I'm just, you know. You got the spirit in I, I'm yeah. a representative of, yeah. of him. Mm -hmm. Ambassador for Christ. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So well, thanks for having us, though. It's, like yes. I said, it's an honor. and. Um, I've always admired you and I've always respected you. Thank you. And um, I think you need to change up your wardrobe a little bit. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> well, I, I, if, if I was going to take wardrobe advice, it would be from you. Cause, right? uh, I told you that years ago that right. you're always the sharpest dresser yeah. I ever knew. That's funny. A, a buddy of mine on Facebook put up uh, that I grew up across the street with, but yeah. a, um, I think it was a fifth grade picture, fifth grade. Fifth or sixth, I can't Still remember. Stazzy. And he goes, Tom, Tom Carter always dressing to the <laughs> T, you know, and he's in a just regular polo, and I've got this nice shirt and nice shoes and nice slacks because that's how my mom made me dress. So you got it from her? Yeah. Eventually, I started shedding those clothes yeah. because, you know, it just wasn't. No, your mom always had you guys, all of you guys dress nice. Yeah. And I did the same with my kids. I, you know, even when we didn't have money, I was like, oh, my kids need to be dressing nice. Yeah. I'm, Thomas always went to shirt or to school with a little collared shirt on. I just, that was important to me. So, yeah. Well, I have no sense of style, so that's why I've stuck with the same thing for 12 yeah, years. It's easy. Yeah. And then when I'm not wearing this, I have black t-shirts yes. with red ties on yes. them. Uh, no, so I'm literally uh, just always red tied out. So. <laughs> Someone told me I need to get a red tie tattoo on my chest. Oh. Oh. So. You should. Well, I don't know about that. That'd be painful, yeah. Right. But uh, no, you definitely made a difference with your branding Thank yes. you on that. And um, people know who you are mm -hmm. as a result. So, yeah. yeah, It works. It yeah. does. I don't have to worry about what I'm going to wear. I'm not going to have to worry about my hairstyle. So, yeah, it's perfect. that's true, huh? Because mm -hmm. I have no other options. It's just right. a cul-de-sac. So, a cul-de-sac works. <laughs> okay. Well, guys, thank you so much for sure. being on the show. It's been wonderful, and I can't wait to see how this encourages and inspires people. Because I, I think does. your story is encouraging and inspiring. Right. So, thank you for cool. being on the Red Tie Community Show with the ball guy in the red tie, John Butler, your favorite bald-headed red tie wearing community show host. See you in escrow. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>